Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how the button tool works here in Clo 3D. To start with, you'll want to work in split view for a while. And what I have set up are a couple of demos. The first is a simple one. I have a placard here and it's stitched together and it's strengthened. You don't necessarily have to strengthen them. But what you want to do is draw an internal line down the center. G, click once click again, hit enter, and then this will give you the placement for the buttons. In the 3D window, grab the button tool. I'm going to start up at the top here. I'm going to click once to activate it, and then I'll click again and it will set a button. And it will just give you the standard button to start with. Then grab the button select tool, click it, and I'm going to copy paste. And when I go to paste here, it'll stick to the mouse, and then I'm going to right click. And this will bring up the dialog box. How many do I want? And I'm just going to do three for now at a distance of 5.5, just so for our demo, we see four buttons lined up on the placard. And you can do as many as you need. And that's good. Now with the selection tool, I'm going to copy and paste that one over. Now we want uh, these to be buttonholes. And since they're perfectly aligned, it's pretty easy with the button selection tool. You can click and drag across all of them, right click and convert to buttonhole, and there you go. By the way, if you want these to be uh, facing a different direction, if I click across all of them, that brings up this option here, and then I can hit maybe 180 and flip them over. It's up to you. And now let's uh, stitch these together. First, I'm going to stitch this placard. unfreeze my sample and positioning is important because of the physics involved uh, we don't want these two placards to be fighting with one another so I'm going to try and put the one that it's buttoning through on top now that I have these a little closer I'll just go to the 3d window because it's just easier I'm going to grab the button lock tool and click once on the button and then another time on the button hole. You can also do this in the 2D window if you have to. With them all done, I'm going to grab my select tool and I'm going to simulate. You can see that it's buttoned. But if you pull really hard on these, they are going to flip. So in other words, you might get something that inverts like that. So do be careful. Placement of your patterns are really important with the button tool. So if I bring these a little closer and simulate, I'm taking the tension off. Okay, let's move over to another example here. In this example, I'm going to make a double-sided placard, which is pretty common. So copy and paste again over here. Grab the button select tool. Click and drag and right click to convert these to a buttonhole. Now copy and paste. And this one's going to go behind. So I'm going to rotate my view, put it back here and drag it behind it. By the way, if these don't line up, or in this case you want the uh, back side of the fabric to be facing the other way you can hit Control G to flip the normal sometimes that'll flip the uh, buttonhole tool but not always so you may need to come over here and with the button select tool just click on these and you can shift click to select them all and rotate those 180 degrees Okay, now that they all line up, let's stitch them together. And for this sample, we'll just stitch one of the placards to that piece of fabric. Again, position is important here, so I'm going to get these close together. And I'm going to try and place them right above the other piece here. Uh, of course, before I lock them together, I'll get these two pieces back in place. As close as possible is best. 
In this case, now I'm gonna lock these together using the button lock tool over in the 2D window. So click once. It's helpful to have a split view open because you can click once and then see which one is actually in the front and which one's actually in the back. And I wanna go through this one to this one. So I'm just gonna click on it and it should make its way through. Back in 3D view, let's give it a shot. And it looks okay. There's a lot of tension on that, so I'm gonna undo. And I'm gonna grab all of these pattern pieces and bring them a little closer together. Now I'm gonna simulate and it looks better. Still a lot of tension, so adjust accordingly. Lastly, if you have uh, the buttons already in place and they're buttoned and you like them, but now you wanna style things, in the button menu here, I can add a new button. I can click on it and change the different types of buttons. So there's a whole menu full of options right here. I'll just click on one that I've made already and I can adjust the size of the button, the, button, the thickness and all of that stuff. I can change the color over here and most importantly, the material. It starts with fabric map, but we'll go with metal. And in that case, crank down the shininess. If you have a button that you want to replace, you can just drag it onto the button here and see those uh, options reflected on it. So if I go down and I maybe drop the reflectivity, it becomes a little more matte. But you know, if you want shiny buttons, drop roughness, bring up metalness and reflection intensity. And that's really it. That's how buttons work in Clo 3D. Good luck.